Hello and good afternoon and welcome to Speaking the Truth About Money with Martin Coward and Joy the Wise Woman. From the lies and the falsehood of scarcity and doubt and not enough to the truth that we are born into, of abundance, we come into abundance and the universe is of abundance and that's how we create. And that's how we're going to be that's how we are creating a world a new world of economic abundance where we're building social structures and economic systems that everyone gets to enjoy and benefit from having. And I'm so excited today to have another Martin, Martin Sunday, as my guest. Martin is a longtime friend of mine. We were on leadership track for many years together in the Mankind Project. That's where we both learned a little bit about shadow work and light. And we became good friends back in those days. And we are still good friends. And I recently had a chance to talk to him about what he's doing in the world of light design. And also, I think what brought us back together is he took note of the fact that I have a company called Financial Heart Space. And he also runs a heart-centered business. And we're going to talk a little bit about why would you want to run a heart-centered business? Well, if you want to make money, that's one of them. You know, you might think it's odd, but really, if you want to run a business from the heart, because when you're running from the heart, you're running it for the benefit of the world. It's not just for yourself to make money. That's what a heart-centered business does, from my perspective. We're going to hear about his in a second. But, um, and I want to hear more about that. I, I want to hear less from me. But I just want to tell you, that's the idea of the show, is why would you ever want to ask me, what does it mean to have a heart-centered business? Why would you want to have a heart-centered business? And what makes a heart-centered different business from something else, perhaps? So, Martin, once thank you for thank you for joining me and welcome to our show today. And I want to ask you with this question: What got you started in this world, into this space of being a lighting designer and a heart-centered business? And where do you want to take this in the next two or three years? So I kind of fell into this business. Um, I was with a partner in Los Angeles and he was a lighting designer. And I, this was back in early eighties. And he, it was fascinating to see how light affected environments and how we were using colored light and gels to um, make this restaurant look really amazing. <clears throat> I just fell in love with the whole process. Mm -hmm. Um, I ended up moving to San Diego for a couple of years and working with the case companies down there, project managing their man their projects. And then I moved out to Houston in 2000, working for Lighting Inc. as, an in as a lighting designer for them. Mm -hmm. And um, opened my own business about 2009 and have been slowly but surely building it. Um, and... Interestingly enough, the leadership training that I learned in the Mankind Project taught me a lot about leadership, about the burden of leadership and the gift of leadership. And so I've always been uh, a seeker, a spiritual seeker, a meditator, a, um, yoga, all of that. And somehow I have always wanted to bring that spiritual part into business, mm -hmm. the spiritual idea of um, meditating, connecting, mm -hmm. being heart centered. And my definition of heart centered is actually being centered to the energy in my heart. So I find that I can be up in my head or I can be down in my heart. And if I'm up in my head, so often I'm in my judgments, I'm in my fear, I'm in my anger. I'm in my upset. Um, I'm trying to figure things out and I'm getting all just spinning around in it. But when I sink down into my heart, the answers are so much clearer. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, it's so much easier to um, look at something and sometimes it doesn't make sense. Right. I, you know, I, I not, had, to the, not to the binary ego thinking mind, does it? You know, I had a situation recently. Um, where I expanded the business based on a loan that I thought was coming through. 
And then I found out that nobody was getting their uh, IDL, EDIL loan increases. And I was like in fear, right? I got into fear. I got into upset. I got into, um, oh my God, what am I going to do? And my business coach is like, well, just go to the bank and get a line of credit. And they're like, the bank's like, oh, sure. We'll give you a $10,000 credit card at 18.4% interest. Uh-huh. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not, that's not the right way. And um, I sat there on a Friday night and I, I kind of got it. I can make the choice between fear or faith. And so I shifted and said, okay, I'm going to have faith. This is going to work out. I feel it in my heart that this is going to work out. So I'm going to follow this path. Mm-hmm. And um, two days later, I got a, an email from the SBA saying, please go to the portal that we have some information about your loan request. And it was real interesting because I'm thinking, oh, here's the decline letter. And instead it was, given the information that you gave us, we think you should have $8,000 more. <laughs> you know, I love that story. I'm going to say, you know, <clears throat> this is the, I want to say, I've recently, this is so funny. I had a guest on here about two weeks ago and she was telling me about the quantum field. And I've always been a little bit, oh, it sounds a little too woo-woo to me, you know. But I, she gave me a clear understanding about it. So I began to look into it. And then I and then and that led me to watching a YouTube video on quantum computing. And the difference between thinking with our binary brain and with our open heart, with the heart, with that, that beacon that connects us to the quantum field, divine presence, the big brain, if you want to call it, infinite intelligence. It, it's like the difference between a binary computer that thinks in plus and minuses and a quantum computer that works on a spectrum that's always looking for a win because it's not plus or minus. It's always on a spectrum. And when we can let go of the negative story, the negative result, I didn't get the loan. And then you go, well, I'm going to go find another external solution that didn't work. And you let that go. It opened up the opportunity for more, for more to happen in a positive way. You opened up into that quantum field and received a larger sum of money. That's how the law of attraction really works. It's right. not saying I, I'm attracted to a Mercedes and I want one in my driveway, so I'm going to think positive thoughts until one arrives. Or, you know, I don't have to do anything. Money's just going to arrive in my bank account. No, it takes a little action on our part. And what you did is perfect. You made a choice. I can either get all excited and I can get, or I can just let it all go, have some faith and trust into the universe is going to provide because I got something big to do and it's going to provide for me. So you did, you let it go. And all of a sudden on that spectrum of the quantum field, you got what you needed to move your business forward. I think that's a beautiful, beautiful example of how we use prayer and meditation and our contemplative practices to build and grow our business and solve our problems. Because, you know, the problem was an, actually an internal conflict. It was, you know, you, the symptom was you weren't getting the loan. But then right. you turned it into a problem. Well, I, I'm stuck. And you said, wait a minute. I, I, I don't know how I did it, but I created this problem. And I got to go <clears throat> in myself to find a solution. Well, it was a perfect example of the action of having faith in the universe and then the universe having faith in me. Right. It's a it's a reciprocal relationship. It's a give, it's a giving and a receiving. I'm gonna have faith in in this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna turn what looked like a negative into because from my binary brain, it, it looked like this is the only answer. It's either this or that. But from the from the world of quantum physics and the world of the big picture how reality is just created energy it's always looking for energy that's positive and creative and growing and expansive right i mean it's the so this thing of having a heart-centered business is about the practical aspects of it are about waking up in the morning getting ready for to come to work meditating before i come 
And the last part of my meditation is getting really connected to this heart energy. Mm -hmm. And then I have a, have a, a little song I listen to on the way in from work. It's called One Day in Heaven uh -huh. by Michael Beckwith. And it's just a yeah. great, great song. And I listen to that song on the way in and get even a little more connected. And then, um, you know, my business, it's a very creative business. So it's very right brain business. But running a business and creating the documentation for all of this is very left brain. So I'm moving back and forth in my brain. But, mm -hmm. but getting centered in my heart sometimes is hard. So I have to catch myself when I'm like, I start to get that fear going. I start to get the nervousness going. I'm like, okay, I'm not in my heart anymore. Got to come back down. Take a few breaths. Take some real deep breaths like you said earlier. Yeah. Because the heart is, it, it is the, you know, there's, we, we as human beings are only experience a small amount of the energetic reality of the world. But the heart is what's able to con is where we are connected to that higher level of energy force. That's that's the essence of who we are. And when we and you, I can actually, I think you pick you what you just said, allude the same thing is, I can actually feel that in my heart. I I do the same thing. You, I get up in the morning and I get my coffee and I go sit in the backyard, and I just allow myself to wake up with the world with my heart open because for me i wake up in the morning with vultures on the bedpost it's like going, <laughs> you're not any good why you might as well stay in bed and you're 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 you know i'm living in the i wake up living in the past actually of all the bad things that ever happened to me and i'm like well thank you for all that, inf that valuable information we're going to go downstairs we're going to fix a nice cup of coffee and we're going to go out and sit in my back in my garden and we're going to wake up with the birds and all of a sudden and if i just let myself go and let my mind get quiet and get still and listen listen to all of a sudden I feel my heart expanding, opening, and I'm now connected to, to what I call joy, the wise woman. That is the divine presence within me that I give her her name. We all have one, by the way. I find it easier for me because I know when she's speaking and listening, I don't know when Martin is wanting his agenda and Martin has to get out of the way so that joy, the wise woman can do her thing. And I know, I know when I do get out of the way and just listen to her advice, it might be something like, Martin, I think you need to go take a nap. Like, right <laughs> but you're tired. And I'm like, okay, let's go take a nap. I know when I listen to her, but my ego's like, oh, you don't have time to take a nap. You better stay up and get working. You're not going to make it. Joy says, it's time for a nap. We're going to take a nap. <laughs> and I find when I do what Joy says <laughs> and listen to her guidance, I have a much better day and I get a lot more accomplished. <laughs> I don't know about you. That's why I live, have a heart-centered business. And that's why I practice heart-centered prayer because it connects us. This 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 energy field, this creative energy for the for everything you see that we, we live in, that is God from my perspective. It's not something in a book. What you everything you see, everything in life is God at work in this energy form, what you can see and what you cannot see. We we cannot not be in it. But we can create the illusion with our mind that we're not. We can disconnect. So the point of meditation is the uh, uh, opportunity to say, okay, quiet the mind, quiet the fear, quiet all that noise so that I can experience and feel my way into this higher level of consciousness energy. Being. Exactly. Exactly. And I'd like to hear a little bit now about the about light and shadow. Well, you know, um, it's so interesting because um, there's all kinds of different lights. There's mm -hmm. the light I'm sitting under. There's the light you're sitting under, natural light. There's um, beams of light. There's lasers where it's right down to a light beam. Or there's lights just spread out. You can do lights from lamps. You can do lights from recessed cans. You can light up artwork with light. You can have track light. There's all kinds of different lights, but there's also the internal light. Mm -hmm. which is the spiritual light of who we are. Yep. And that spiritual light is something that also shines into the world at different levels at different times. So it's my job at, as a spiritual being is to clear away the, the blockages, clear away the um, shadows so that that light can shine even brighter into the world. 
And that's part of what I pray about at night. Yeah. To I, be a clearer conduit. And that is what the, the, that, the, that light, and we, and we know from physics, um, that all, all, everything is a vibration of light energy. And okay. it's all about the vibrational frequency that creates either we can see it with our, we can see it, touch it and feel it with our human physical presence, or there's a, there is much more light energy, the creative light energy that's moving at a really high frequency that's creating the world, that's creating you and me, that's turning that light into matter. Right. And even, even with disease, which is a lower level energy light, one of the ways to be healthy is to attract yourself to a higher, to, to, right. to develop a higher vibrational field through yoga, meditation, eating well. And that really helps, especially during these times of COVID. I've been out in the public for the last year and a half, and I've been somehow able to stay COVID free. I just had, matter of fact, I just had my third vaccine on Wednesday. So I took a little nap yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've got to get my third one too. Uh, my third boost, my booster shot. And I was, I'm, I, I, I want to share a little something about, because when we had that shift in energy, it's, it's, it's the driver. I, just want to, I love this about heart center. It's, it's what drives the business and what drives the action. And we'll just take something as simple as getting a vaccine. You, some people could get, and there's nothing wrong. With, there's nothing wrong with either one. It's how do you want to experience it? If I get the vaccine because I'm coming from fear that I might get sick, I might die, I might, you know, from a place of fear, I'm going to get this vaccine. I'm afraid. That's going to be one experience, and that's perfectly fine. And, and there's nothing. I'm not. And I wouldn't. It's not bad or good. That's just one experience. But if I shift my mindset and from my heart, say, you know what? I am so grateful for this vaccine. Because I love my life, I love my family, I love my friends, I, I love my health. I'm going to do this from a place of complete love from for, for the world. I'm going to, love is going to be my driver to this action. And when I do, all of a sudden, the action of it shifts to something that's fun, enjoyable, pleasant. I go in and I meet greet people there at the at the. the the stations, each one is, it's a whole different experience. And that's what I mean about having a heart centered business. We got to do all the same things. We still got to pay our bills, pay our employees, hire all those doing things are all going to be the same. But if we do it from a place of heart, from a place of love and generosity and gratitude, it makes the doing of it so much more fun and it creates the opportunity for growth and expansion of what we're building because that's the creative force within us fear is the destructive force we reflect we go back inside ourselves because we're afraid but when we open our hearts and expand them we create and we grow and we expand and we make the world better for others well, i think it's it's even as simple as i have fear-based thinking and that is not a good place for you to make decisions. Nope. I have heart-based thinking, which, which is love-based thinking, which is a great place for me to make yes. decisions. So part of what we do on our Monday morning team meetings, we start with a, a little meditation to get present. A little, mm -hmm. Sometimes we do a little salad dance or you know, tapping or breathing or whatever, but just getting present. And then we check in. We each do a little check-in, not about work about how we're feeling, just to get connected, mm -hmm. open up. And then we work on our mission and our, our principles. Every every week we work on our mission and our principles. Um, and our mission is um, we light up lives through the artistic use of light technology. I love it. it, 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 it that North Star is what gets you out of the bed in the morning. It's what gives you a sense of purpose and it puts everybody on the same page. Well, um, and we've developed this together. This isn't like my thing. Yeah, it's what it's what we as a as a uh, as a company, our company culture is to build this together. And then we then we then we work on our company values. And I just want to share a couple of them with you. Yeah, I love to hear. Uh, honesty, excellence, integrity, grace, 
empowerment, responsibility, creativity, personal growth, solution-oriented, and coaching. Perfect, because it's all focused on other people. It's, it's, all, it's all focused on something bigger than yourself. Right. It's all focused on the heart. Like I, I want to share this is my favorite one, Grace. Our process should flow with a sense of ease. If we are running into blocks, we need to reevaluate and implement a solution-oriented plan. We have a commitment to a high level of integrity and to delivering sustainable results that benefit the community. I love it. And what, what this is bringing up for me is my, one of my favorite influencers is Ray Dalio. He is one of the richest people in the world. Mm. He's created one of the biggest hedge funds, wealth management funds in the world. He did it based on principles. And he, he even put the principles on years ago before all this got sort of popular. He built, he, he built his business. He built this huge financial empire on principles. And he's got a book called Principles. And I, rec- I always recommend it to all of my coaching clients who are building a business because that is exactly how you build a business. You build it based on principles and, va- and shared values that are for the betterment of the world. Right. And that is, what I, that is the underlying uh, way, if you will, or, or methodology for, I, for for moving this world into this abundance economy. Before the pandemic, we did we did at a sort of maybe a, a big level. We were very much dominated by what we call I call it the me 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 male dominated. I got to win at all costs. It's all about me. I got to get patriarchy. Yeah, it's that whole arc of superiority and power. But since the pandemic, something shifted. I'm not, I, I talk to a lot of people all the time, but I'll tell you, I call it the collective dark night of the soul is what I call it. We all came out of that into what, what many of my uh, more spiritual savvy people than me are talking about is the fifth dimension, the age of Aquarius, the age of we, the age of women, and which is and, and, and the divine feminine, and not just the women, but it's the divine feminine, that part of us that cares and nurtures and grows and creates. and it, it's going from the me, 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 me into we, we, we. Everything we do from the heart is for the benefit of everyone. And that's how we build new businesses, new economic structures and economic systems that everybody can participate. And if you look at what our government's doing here in the United States, it's amazing how we are that they're turning that ship around. I mean, right. I, and, and we, we, we are for the first time in, since, since I've been around, I'll be 67 next week. We are actually got a government that number one cares about us. And number two, about people, about the people it governs, which is what they're here, they're there for. And about using the, the taxpayers dollars to grow and build economies and systems that everybody will benefit from. <laughs> And there are some people who don't like that, unfortunately, but they'll come around eventually. But that, that that's the way the world is moving. That is the future of the world. Right. And you know, I want, to, I want to go back to something you said, that. Martin. Um, yeah. I, uh, I, really, I really get that we're moving into a new way of, of being. You know, we've been in the sign of Pisces, the two fish, mm-hmm. duality, good and bad, right and wrong, black and white. We've been in that kind of thinking where it's, you know, it's either this or it's this. And what we're moving into is the awareness of oneness. Yes. Where we begin to realize that good and bad, right and wrong, love and hate, light and dark are two parts of one thing. Spectrum. Like you said, a continuum. There, there, And the truth really lies somewhere in along the continuum. Right. And we can live out of the truth rather than our judgments, right? But right. the truth. And when we do that, that's when we're living out of our heart. Right. Yeah. And, I agree. And that's that's where we're I think we're moving. I'm trying to um, develop a company and a business where my employees, my my associates are excited about being there. Yeah. They know where we're going. They're part of where we're going. They're part of the um, the growth of our company. We uh, we have our goal to open our first satellite office next year. Um, you know, we just went from two people to four people. Uh, I mean, three people to five people, and um, it, we're just growing like this because of that heart energy. Yeah, you know, and, and getting the blocks, doing the personal work, 
I've done a lot of personal work to keep getting rid of the shadows, looking at the blocks, getting through the blocks, loving those parts of myself that I hide, repress, and deny and sometimes feel shame for. And what do I do? I project them out onto other people. Right. So it's like when I see it out there, it's a, like they're my teacher. Mm-hmm. They're my teacher. Right. And when we learn, and, and to me, and I use shadow work in my coaching practice, that's, that's the core of my practice. It's really what and what my whole journey is, and I think the hero's journey is a journey to self-love. It really is exactly what you're talking about, is learning to love ourselves whole and complete, even those parts of ourselves in shadow we don't like, especially those parts, because when we learn to love our shadow part, we learn to lo- love the parts of ourselves we don't like. It transforms those into the gold behind those can shine forward. And we, again, move that into a positive, creative energy force. So we mine the gold from those shadow beliefs is the way I like to look at it. Yeah, usually those parts of us were working for us at some point. Yeah. I mean, mean, as gay people, there's a part of us that needed to protect ourselves. Right. I mean, I grew up, people were bullied. I had two friends in college that were killed going home from college. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so it's not like we, we created the fact that some people don't like us. I'm working right now with a bunch of refugees, LGBT refugees in Kenya, and uh, I'm having a really good time with them. They came up out of my world a couple of weeks ago, and I'll tell you about that offline sometime. But those, those guys are teaching me a lot about love and tolerance and how, how to move forward. But the reality is when we, can, we, we grew up, learning that stuff and so when when trump became president i went into a tailspin that's that's when it took me into my dark night of the soul because it it triggered me all those bullies in my childhood including my father who would always beat me up or make me feel bad about myself because i wasn't on the football field i'd rather be over there throwing pom-poms with cheerleaders because i was gay and i didn't know what gay was i was just i was just a different not a normal boy in those days but uh so with this part i'm of my, so grateful for that, what he did as a president of bringing up all of the darkness. Yes. For us to see. Hold it all up. Tra- I just brought it right up into the light. Yep. That that is so great. That because it's where it needs to be. It yeah. doesn't. It does. It can't be in the darkness. You know what's when in the darkness we think it's a monster. We turn the light and shine the light on, and you see all that's there is the truth. Right. Absolutely. And one of my favorite things is you don't you don't blame the darkness for being dark. It's it's <laughs> nature. Instead, you love it and you shine a light on it and you find the truth. That's exactly what we're talking about here, you know? So I I love that. I absolutely, I absolutely love that. And that this is this conversation is exactly why it's to anyone listening advantage to begin to think about living from the heart, running your business from the heart, having a mission, a North Star. Mine is I'm creating a world of abundance and prosperity every day. That's my North Star. And that can be for the refugees in Kenya. It can be for my husband. It's for you, Mark. It's for anybody in the world. I'm not just creating it for the select people. It is my heart's mission to eradicate the scarcity mindset from the planet so that everybody can move into the truth of abundance and prosperity and step into their creative genius. And everybody can be a billionaire if they want to be. From survival to thriving. To thriving. My goal is, my my focus right now is is to to create, I don't know where the world 7 million came from, but it's to build a $7 million enterprise where Everybody is participating. Everybody is thriving. Everybody is growing. And I just get to be one that gets to use my heart to pull the open the levers to make it happen. It's not that I want $7 million in my bank account so I can, I, I mean, I might enjoy some things. I might enjoy having a house on the side of a mountain in Puerto Rico. That's fine. And you can too, because that's part of what we manifest. But it's the joy, joy of living in the abundance we live in, being able to share it all. But it's not for me. It is for it is to create something. Uh, it says that very much like it's creating something for everybody to participate in. 
in that in that in that in that abundance. And I don't know where Joy gave me this number called seven of seven million, and it's just stuck in my head. So I'm in the I'm in my, in my coaching business is here to create the the, the seed money, the income, to, and the experience to grow that enterprise. And part of this is having this podcast to talk about how do we get the whole world into this movement of living in the truth of abundance and prosperity. You know, I think one of the biggest keys, Matt Martin, is that realizing it's not about the it's not about the the end of the of the it's about no. the, it's about the path to there. Yeah, so it's, that, not about, it. it's not about the seven million dollars. It's like, okay, that's the vision. Now let's have some fun growing that seven million. I mean, I gotta, have, I just need a number. It, it may, it may not be even seven hundred thousand. I don't know, but it's fun. It's exciting to put that number and think. Now, how can we build it? Who would I write checks to? Who would I employ? Who would work with us? Who would be, who would be, who would be my co-partners? Who would be my collaborator? All of that building and creating that gives me some kind of umbrella of context to put it into in dollars so that I can have some form of measurement, I guess, of my progress along the way. But it's, but, but you're right. It's the journey. It's the fun of creating it that makes it so much fun. You know, it could be, it could be 70 million. I don't know where the number, but it's just like, that's just sort of my, that's sort of the number that, so let's build a seven million dollar enterprise. Okay, let's build seven million, and let's have some fun doing it. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I mean, you know, our my job is to is to build homes with, with great lighting, right? Or to build offices with great lighting. But the reason our mission is we light up lives through the artistic use of light technology is that also the process of doing it. Yes. we are lighting lighting up the lives of our 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 clients. Right. Through our techniques and through our, our enthusiasm and our excitement. And that is another level of life that we bring as part of our work. I love that. I love that. Well, it, I, I can't believe we're actually at uh, over a little over a half hour because <laughs> I've had so much fun reconnecting with you. And if people want to find you, what's the is it just Martin Martin Sunday on Facebook or LinkedIn? MartinSundayDesigns.com. MartinSundayDesigns.com. Well, MartinSundayDesigns.com. You can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, but MartinSundayDesigns.com is uh, our website, and it has a lot of our work on it, which is really interesting. It's really fantastic, uh, colorful, exciting work to just even see and get ideas from. So please go to the website and have fun with it. I'm going to ask this. If somebody sent you a direct message and say, I heard you on uh, Martin's podcast speaking to you about money. And they say, I really want to get to know you and speak to you. Just to, would you would you be open to just somebody sending you a direct message and saying, Martin, I heard you on, on Martin's show. Can we have a conversation? I want to know more about what you're doing. Would sure. That- sure. <laughs> I bet. I know. I always love that when people just reach out to me and they say, I heard you and I like what you had to say. And I just want to I just want to get to know you. And find out how You know, there's a great book called The Big Leap. And he talks about time in it. And and you just make time, just make time. You did, yeah. Because the, about the, first of all, time is just an illusion of the human mind. There's totally. Time, it's like there's plenty of money. There's not. In, the only thing I can say about money is true. It's an infinite. It's an infinite resource. There is no. There is no. Some pie of money somewhere that's got defined boundaries. We create money. That's why I love this infrastructure bill. We're going to create all that. It's not like we're going to spend it. We're going to, we're going to, when they talk about the bigger the number, that's the bigger the creation. <laughs> it's like my $7 million business. It's just, that's the bigger the creation. It's, it, we create money. We create wealth. And uh, that's what's so exciting about moving into this new abundance economy. So thank you so much. And hold one second. I always want to close this out and let people know how much I appreciate them being here. And I want you to know, as I, as you, as I said before, I am a, a uh, spiritual teacher and a prosperity and mindset coach working with gay, bi- uh, transgender and bisexual men and business leaders to help them build and grow their businesses. And we, and we have, I have a wonderful uh, Facebook group called Financial Heart Space for Gay, Transgender and Bisexual Men. And I would encourage anybody listening to join that group. We have all sorts of free workshops and things. So the idea there is to provide and support our community, the, the gay, bi and transgender male communities of what I work in. I also have another website called uh, the Financial Mystic Sanctuary, which everybody's welcome to join and learn from me over in that area as well. So thank you so much today for joining us. 
and may love and prosperity prevail. And thank you, Martin, for coming and joining me today.